will go on. A morale boost for thousands of grieving NASA workers. That was perfect. Yeah, it was a time to, to respect the family and, and uh, to show his sincerity. It's the families NASA is rallying around tonight while preserving the memory of the ones they've lost. Our duty now is to provide comfort to the brave families of the Columbia crew, the families who take so much pride in their loved ones' remarkable accomplishments. As we depart this place, we pray now your blessings upon these families, the NASA community, and upon our great nation. God bless America. Amen. Implied today, if not stated, moving past the grief, there's work to be done here, and a lot of it, specifically finding out what caused this, keeping it from happening again. At the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Tom Negevin, CBS 3, Eyewitness News. There are new indications tonight that the shuttle's breakup began several minutes before it disintegrated over the state of Texas. Home video taken near Phoenix, Arizona here seems to show a large piece of flying off the shuttle as it hurtled through the sky at 13,000 miles an hour. At the same time, a California astronomer also reports seeing something coming off the spacecraft. And now searchers in Arizona found what appears to be more shuttle debris, more pieces of the puzzle. We now have our first glimpse of the shuttle's nose cone, which we reported last night was found embedded in the ground in eastern Texas. It was lifted out today and wrapped up. Among new pieces of shuttle debris located today, an engine in Louisiana and a crew member's seat, a wing part, and some tanks in Texas. Also, more human remains were found today in a forest in Texas. And once again, as in past disasters and wars, a facility in our area will play a major role. It involves the military mortuary at Dover Air Base in Delaware. Colette Cassidy reports from Dover. Well, Mark, tonight a spokesperson for Dover Air Force Base is confirming that the remains of Columbia's crew will be arriving here sometime early tomorrow afternoon. Now, you may remember the service here back in 1986 when the remains of the Challenger's crew arrived here in Dover. Well, tonight we're being told that unlike that scene, the arrival tomorrow will be closed to the media and the public. Dover is saying that it is adding 20 reservists to the mortuary staff to help handle this job. And because of the toxic chemical used on the shuttle, forensic teams will use more precautions to handle the remains. Now, NASA is only confirming that some of the remains have been found, but we are being told right now that a rabbi will accompany the remains in case they are identified as Elon Ramon. He, of course, the first Israeli in space. Reporting from Dover Air Force Base tonight, I'm Colette Cassidy, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. The investigation into the Columbia disaster is far from over. Stay with Eyewitness News for continuing coverage. We'll have more from Dover Air Base tomorrow on Eyewitness News. Now tonight's headlines in the showdown with Iraq. Secretary of State Colin Powell presents evidence to the United Nations tomorrow. Reportedly, he will reveal previously secret intelligence information about Iraq. Earlier today, inside that country, U.N. inspectors found another empty chemical warhead. They're now testing it. And Chief Inspector Hans Blix warned Saddam Hussein the clock is ticking and, quote, it's five minutes to midnight. And Saddam Hussein is talking to Western journalists for the first time in 12 years in an exclusive interview to be broadcast on 60 Minutes 2 tomorrow. Hussein insists he's not linked to al-Qaeda and he has no banned weapons, he says. These weapons are not aspirin pills that one can hide in his pockets. And it's easy to work out if Iraq has weapons or does not have weapons. If we had relations with the organization of Al-Qaeda, we would not be ashamed to admit it. Therefore, I would like to tell you directly that we have no relationships with Al-Qaeda. You can see that entire interview tomorrow night at 9 on 60 Minutes 2 right here on Channel 3. Well, tonight we learned that a top school administrator is out of work following a school brawl that left six students slashed in South Philadelphia. Todd Quinones is live at Auden Reed High, the scene of the violence. Hi, Todd. How you doing, Mark? Yesterday's fight here left one girl with more than 50 stitches to her face and chest. Now, school district CEO Paul Valla says if top administrators cannot maintain order, he'll make changes. When the school bell rings Wednesday morning here at Auden Reed High School in South Philadelphia, Principal Millage Holloway won't be in charge. 
That decision comes just one day after student Jamila Robinson was attacked inside the school and had her face slashed by another student. When I looked in the mirror downstairs when he had me in the nurse office, I looked in the mirror like I was only shocked a little bit. I don't know why. I'm a real kind person. Holloway, as well as his assistant principal, dean of students, and five members of the security staff have all been reassigned to positions that won't put them in charge of students. Pending an investigation, some could even eventually be fired. School District CEO Paul Vallis made that decision, but he says blame does not rest squarely on the school administrators. There are a lot of factors that contribute to student violence, but uh, we have a responsibility to maintain effective law and order in our communities. When reached at home, Principal Holloway had no comment. Similar changes will also be taking place at Overbrook High School. Vala says there is a history of student violence there. All of these changes will take effect tomorrow morning. Reporting live in South Philadelphia, I'm Todd Quinones, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Todd. Student safety is also a hot topic tonight in Berks County. Five-year-olds at a Reading Head Start program are no longer allowed to sit by the windows because there's no guarantee they won't be shot. Scenes like this one two weeks ago are a big part of the concern. A bullet ricocheted around a classroom during a gunfight outside the school, and now parents and concerned citizens are demanding something be done to stop the rise in gang and drug violence. They say that restricting where the students sit is not the solution. Even though they have a license to carry a gun, that doesn't mean that they have a license to shoot around where people are at at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. FBI statistics show that violent crime in Reading is on the rise. And last week, Reading's police chief resigned under pressure from the community. We learned this weekend that much of life is a matter of luck. Seven astronauts were on the wrong spaceship at the wrong time. Tonight in Philadelphia, the flip side of that story. A woman who was 30 seconds shy of disaster when a knock at the door saved her life. Hampson Fidel is live in the Lawncrest section of Philadelphia with the story of a very close call. Good evening, Tamsin. Well, hi, Mark. Firefighters say they used gut instinct in telling a 71-year-old woman to get out of her house right away. If she had not left her home, she would have gone up with it. It went up in flames just moments later. She just grabbed her coat and left. That's because firefighters told 71-year-old Alisa Ionata they smelled gas near her home. 30 seconds later. I saw that roof coming back down. It was a big fire. Luis Martinez watched from across the street as the house exploded into flames, throwing debris everywhere. You think that's flames like you should have seen before? It was like sky high. A sliding door came crashing through the window of this car parked at least 200 yards down the street. Michelle Siegel's car was also smashed up. At the time, she was inside the nearby elementary school where 180 kids had to be evacuated. I got a big explosion. And... Um, the door shook, the window shook, and uh, we, as soon as I ran out, I saw the smoke. Smoke and flames that took hours to get under control once the gas company finally located the transmission gas main, leaving the fire commissioner with just one thing to say. It is a miracle. And back out here live right now, you're looking at the gas company making repairs. They located that main. Now they are fixing a leak that actually happened and started underneath the sidewalk. We're live in Northeast Philadelphia. Tamson Fidel, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Tamson. A compromise has re reportedly been reached to end a two-day doctor walkout in the state of New Jersey. Doctor save lives! Doctor save lives! 4,000 doctors rallied in front of the State House in Trenton to protest skyrocketing malpractice insurance premiums today. The compromise would set a $300,000 limit on pain and suffering damages paid by malpractice insurance companies. Extra money to pay larger awards and settlements would come from a new catastrophic fund. Doctors and lawyers say that reform is needed. We're losing good doctors from our institution. Uh, I'm an obstetrician and chairman of the department. We've lost 20% of our obstetricians in the last six months. The cure is not to restrict the rights of injured patients. Uh, but to uh, regulate medical malpractice insurance companies, discipline bad doctors, uh, and improve patient safety. Well, today, many emergency rooms in New Jersey were extra busy treating patients with minor ailments who could not see their regular doctors. Next on Eyewitness News at 11, a big hit for New Jersey. Job cuts and tax increases are part of the plan. Steph? 
And I'm Stephanie Stahl. There are a lot of diet claims out there, but what really works? We'll find out with our diet challenge coming up. And I'm meteorologist Kathy Orr. We say goodbye to the rain, but look, cold wind blowing into the Delaware Valley and the chance of snow. I'll be in with the eyewitness weather forecast. That's coming up. Wow. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I want to kill you or kiss you. <laughs> Trading spaces, neighbors redesigning each other's rooms on the hit cable show, but sometimes it turns out bad. Pat Shiraki's special reports coming up on Eyewitness News at 11. Tonight, New Jersey state Republicans are criticizing Governor McGreevy's new budget proposal. It calls for big tax cuts are big cuts and increased taxes. Highlights of the budget include cutting all funding for arts, science, and cultural programs, eliminating at least 1,000 state jobs, raising the cigarette tax 40 cents a pack, and introducing new taxes on casino owners. The budget has to be approved by the legislature by the 30th of June. Last night, Eyewitness News brought you a special consumer alert investigation into health code violations at some of Philadelphia's most popular restaurants. It's an issue of food safety and cleanliness as city health inspectors conduct surprise inspections on area restaurants, with some of them getting critical violations. As of right now, if you want to see an inspection report for Philadelphia restaurants, you need to file a written request, pay a fee, and wait up to a month, unlike New York City, which posts reports on their website. Well, after Paul Moriarty aired our story, city officials say this system may change. What we're going to do is is do a comprehensive audit to see what the cost is involved to, to move the freedom of information information that the city has in the health department onto our website so it can be disseminated to people so they know exactly what's, what's happening with the restaurants. And be sure to tune in Monday night when Paul shows us health inspection results from more Delaware Valley restaurants. That's our special report. Eat at your own risk. Only on Eyewitness News at 11. Finding a diet that works for you is downright difficult. We all know that. Well, tonight we introduce you to four women trying four diets which they hope will work for them. Medical reporter Stephanie Stahl has the first in our Diet Challenge reports. Dieting, the great American pastime. It seems every week there's a new quick way to shed pounds. But how many salads can you eat? Is there a diet anywhere that really works? Oh, this is amazing. I'm even more than what I thought. It's just climbing. Oh, dear. Welcome to the Diet Challenge. Four women testing the most popular diets to see which works best. This is me. This is who I am. Jennifer works a busy schedule at Drexel University, often eating in the office. At 209 pounds, Atkins is her diet. Lose weight eating all the meat, eggs, and cheese she wants. Carbs like bread and pasta are out. So I think I'm going to be able to maintain that, that regimen. Ah, another pound. Janet, a former runner, now weighs 158. Her diet, carbohydrate addicts. Carbs are allowed in only one meal a day. Like Atkins, this plan focuses on protein and fat. I'm really excited about trying this. This is the one diet I haven't tried. Lynn, a computer specialist, is teaming up with Weight Watchers. She starts at 174 pounds. Weight Watchers assigns points to any food you want to eat, but once you reach your allowed daily points, the kitchen is closed. It makes me accountable. I wanted to lose weight. Our fourth dieter, Terry. I feel bloaty and uncomfortable, and the jeans are tight. Ms. Bucks County at the Bodybuilding Masters Tournament 13 years ago. Today, at 134 pounds, she's fighting the weight gain of menopause with sugar busters. The diet allows no refined sugars or carbohydrates, only lean cuts of meat, fruits, and vegetables. Now, these four popular diets make a lot of weight loss claims. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be checking in with the four women you met tonight to find out which diet really does work best. Want to take any bets on which one's going to be the winner? I've heard good things about that Atkins stuff, but I'm not sure. It's popular. Stay posted. We'll, keep, we'll let you know. Seems to me all I have to do <laughs> is stay away from food. Otherwise, it works. Now, the Weather Center and Kathy Orr with the latest on this chill coming back absolutely huh? and i must confess to stephanie and to you i, I was going to eat this chocolate bar oh. and now i think i'm 
going to put it right away. Uh, yeah, not going to go there. Maybe some fruit uh, later on tonight. Good evening, everyone. We are looking at some clear skies across the Delaware Valley and very chilly temperatures with gusty winds. Let's take you out there with our city cam to Center City, Philadelphia, where temperatures have fallen over the course of the evening with a clear sky and winds gusting to about 35 miles an hour. That wind advisory has been discontinued, but it will still be brisk overnight tonight. Our live neighborhood weather takes us to Chester County in Westchester, PA, the Chester County Historical Society. Welcome to our neighborhood weather watch, sponsored by our good friends at Subaru. The temperature right now is 35 degrees. The peak wind gust today, 35 miles an hour. Right now, our winds have subsided. The rain passed early this morning through the afternoon, and we saw some fairly decent rain totals, ranging from a quarter of an inch in Allentown to a nearly a half an inch of rain in Mount Pocono. Dry conditions expected overnight tonight and definitely through the day tomorrow. The high before a cold front moved through, 48 degrees, well above that normal high of 39. The low today, 35. The normal low, 26. So good on both accounts. Right now in Philadelphia, 37. Allentown, 34. Trenton, 36. Atlantic City, 38 degrees, with temperatures falling back into the 20s overnight tonight. After the front, brisk westerly winds built into the Delaware Valley. Some snow showers well to the west. They will stay there. A chance of seeing a few flurries through the Poconos. Otherwise, we are clear, just windy overnight tonight. Those winds continue into the day tomorrow with cold air in place, high struggling in the 30s. Fair weather high pressure builds in, and by late Wednesday into Thursday, we warm up a little bit. It's not until late Thursday that we see the clouds thicken and we see a chance of precipitation down in the deep south moving toward the mid-Atlantic. It's a bit of a snowstorm. We will not see the brunt of this, but there is a chance we could be seeing some light snow late Thursday into Friday morning, and it could accumulate, especially to the south of Philadelphia. We'll keep you updated. Forecast for tonight, clear, cold, and windy. Overnight lows in the 20s. Wind chills five above to five below zero overnight tonight. For tomorrow, mostly sunny and windy. The high temperature, 38 degrees. Winds 15 to 25 miles an hour, and then finally subsiding late tomorrow afternoon into the evening period. The exclusive eyewitness weather five-day forecast, Thursday, mid-30s. Friday, 32 degrees, a chance of some snow showers. Saturday, 38, and by Sunday, clouding up again. The high temperature, 40 degrees, not too shabby for this time of year. We'll keep you posted on that snow report. And of course, Paul Deanna will have an update tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. So that little uh, February thaw is history. Over. History. Yep. Thanks, Kathy. You bet. It is one of the biggest cable shows on the air. And it's largely done right here in the city of Philadelphia. Neighbors all over the country are signing up to trade spaces, as it's called. But tonight, Pat Shiraki shows us how one couple's dream could be another couple's nightmare. All right, let's go for it. Imagine letting the neighbors do some redecorating in your house. Like these women, you might be sorry you did. No, I don't like it. I don't know if and I like the wall color. Oh. I've changed some diapers that were that color. Oh, no. <laughs> Baby poop back. green. If you haven't seen Trading Spaces, here's how it works. With the help of a designer, two neighbors have 48 hours and $1,000 to redesign a room in the other's home. The end result, the reveal, is always a surprise, but not always pretty. We couldn't stand it. It was just way too much. It made us sick when we walked into the room. Mark and Lynn Cole of Collegeville were stunned when they came home to a jungle. I don't know if I want to kill you or kiss you. My initial reaction at the reveal was, I guess, one of disbelief. All right, Doug. Wow. Oh, my God. Even worse, oh God. Mark was allergic to a carpet made of rice, not to mention the bamboo hanging from the ceiling and their bedroom set that was painted red. We tried to sell our furniture on eBay, but because it was red, it didn't match our style. We wanted to go for a little bit more calming effect, not the big wild zebra. Goodness. Oh, I love it! <laughs> Most times, though, homeowners seem satisfied. Good or bad, the goal is to get a reaction. Really cool. Amy Wynn, who lives in Philadelphia, is I'm one of the show's it. carpenters. Whether they're happy or sad about it, we want them to be vigorous, you know? We want them to be like, oh, I absolutely hate it, or, oh, it's so fabulous, tear, tear. Designer Kia Steve Dickerson is also from our area. People like the drama of it all, too. Like, is she going to like it? The anticipation. Will she find it to be attractive, or will she hate it? Well... Can we look at I'm it? a designer. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> She's all in makeup. Okay, well, then there you have it. Of course, the designers are really in charge. Sometimes even the neighbors doing the work are nervous about the redecorating.
I saw bright school bus yellow cabinets and the brightest orange I'd ever seen on the pie safe. And I said to Mike, do you think that they're going to like this? And he said, well, I'm really glad it's not my kitchen. But in the end, they decided to tone down those bright yellow cabinets. Well, that toned down yellow was certainly much easier to take. If you notice that the contestants were a bit feisty, that's actually all part of the design plan. The producers look for couples who are enthusiastic, who have strong personalities, and of course, very strong opinions. And Mark, one other interesting note to all of this. Trading spaces is so popular, it has actually boosted the interior design industry. So from a uh, living room, I do not intend to trade. Pat Shirahi, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. Uh, you can decorate our place anytime. Nice. Very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. 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 It's nice. Coming up next tonight, Beasley Reese with Eyewitness Sports. All right. Thank you, Mark. The Eagles move to the new stadium next season. I'll tell you how much more you'll have to pay to buy a ticket. And the Flyers on Long Island back from the All-Star break. I've got dramatic highlights coming up in sports. Sports director Beasley Reese is here now, and uh, good news, huh, for the fans? Uh, absolutely. We've got some great news. The All-Star break came just in time for the Flyers. They were sliding down a four-game losing streak. Outscored 12-2 in the process, but a new start on the island tonight for the second half of the season. Let's check it out. First period, Jeremy yes, Aronik with the steal. The and gives it away to Aronik for the shot. He scores! Yeah, Flyers go up one to nothing. Let's move to the third period. Islanders with a great chance, but watch Roman Czechmanic. He makes the save, and Eric Desjardins knocks the puck away. Moments later, it's Mark Recchi. Vandermeer, the shot, save rebound, Recchi, he scores! Look at him play. That's the game winner. Flyers win it 2-1, to one. but there's some bad news. Simon Gonier re-injured his groin. He's uh, pulled the groin in exactly the same place. It's... It was a fluke thing. He was coming to the bench, and he just got completely split both ways, and he's out. Ouch. Ouch. Sixers with one more game before the All-Star break. Here they are at practice today, getting ready to face the New Jersey Nets tomorrow night at the First Union Center. The team has been up and down since the six-game winning streak to start the new year. Things are looking up. Allen Iverson was actually talking about practice. I think today was the first day that, like, everybody practiced except um, Samuel Dellenbaugh. And, you know, I had to go up to some guys and um, ask them their names because I hadn't seen them on the court in a long time. High school action, Conestoga and Lower Marion all Conestoga early. Uh, John Montgomery getting inside with a hoop and foul there. Lower Marion would fight back. Jared Lewis will hit a three-pointer under 10 seconds left to cut it to one, but that's as close as it would get. Stoga wins it at Lower Marion, 55 to 53. And finally tonight, the Eagles announced the new ticket prices for Lincoln Financial Field next year. Prices are up. Now, there are a lot of numbers involved, but basically the seats went up about $10 on average. For example, 700 level seats went from $45 to $55. The Eagles say inflation and the fact that the amenities at every seat is better at the new stadium explain the increases. So there we have it. Got to pay for the new bricks. Big, new, beautiful place. Got to pay for it. Got to pay for it. There you go. Next on Eyewitness News, Patty LaBelle having to make some tough choices tonight. That story when we come right back. Philadelphia's original diva, Patti LaBelle, comes home in search of a new star in true diva style. Miss LaBelle spent the night scouting new talent at the Hotel Sofitel in Center City. One of these five lucky ladies will go on to compete in a new VH1 show called Destination Divas, a show that turns amateurs into stars. We promise not to tell who the winner is till they broadcast the show. We promised. Up next, Kathy with tomorrow's weather planner. We'll be right back. What's the weather planner, Kathy? Kathy? Well, windy during the day, the high temperature 38, <laughs> less wind by the afternoon. Not a bad day. That was Caddy, Kathy. <laughs> what a, Eyewitness News returns in the morning. Stay tuned now for the David Letterman Show. Coach John Gruden, Chucky, oh. next. That's a good one. Don't miss the Battle of the Sexes on the 90 Minute Survivor premieres. Image runner from Canon. This is your day, ma'am. Bask in its glory.
Why are the political insiders afraid of this woman? Why did they sue to keep her off the ballot? Why are they misrepresenting her qualifications? She has exactly the right legal experience and background necessary for Superior Court. They know she's qualified. So why are they so worried? It's because she has integrity and independence. It's because she's not one of the boys. Stand up for what's right. Vote Jacqueline Shogun for Superior Court. Sir Isaac Newton discovered the principle of gravity. Galileo proved the sun is the center of the universe. Ben Franklin, inventor, statesman, philosopher, and Bob, who just chose Comcast high-speed internet over DSL. Genius. Comcast high-speed internet. Right now, it's just $19.99 a month, making it the smartest choice out there. It's cable-powered, incredibly fast, and constantly connected. Call today for this great offer. Sports director Beasley Reese is here tonight with the story of a bunch of happy guys in town. Yeah, I'm sure they're having a great time, a very private elite fraternity in town for a round of high-level discussions. The NFL owners are here to talk business and to get a look at our new football field. They arrived at Lincoln Financial Field tonight for a party and a tour. Uh, tomorrow, a group of owners are expected to introduce legislation that would increase the number of teams making the playoffs. But Commissioner Paul Tagliabu doesn't think the plan has much support. I don't think it will even uh, come to a vote uh, with the competition committee being against it 8-0 to zero and a number of other teams being against it. We'll discuss it, but uh, I, don't, you know, I don't think it will come to a vote. I don't think the commissioner likes it either. The owner just checked out the view from the intimate confines at Lincoln Financial Field. Here's more from the commissioner. It's uh, the kind of stadium, I guess, that... Uh, legendary Eagles fans have earned over the years. It's a, uh, it's a football-only facility for some of the best football fans in the country. All right, to the Sixers we go. A lot of speculation concerning the future of Coach Larry Brown. Team chairman Ed Snyder released a statement at 4.30 today saying that he'll get together with Coach Brown next week after Larry's return from vacation to discuss his future plans. Dallas and San Antonio in the NBA squaring off in the Western Conference Finals. Game one, huge first half for two-time MVP Tim Duncan. 26 points in the first half. The Spurs lead by eight in the third. All right, it's time for a timeout in sports. But when we return, playoff hockey and baseball highlights coming up in the second half of sports. From the minute you walk in until the minute you leave, We'll put a smile on your face. It's a whole new party at Showboat. We've added over 500 luxurious hotel rooms, more of your favorite slots, plus more seats at the French Quarter Buffet. And there's more surprises coming this fall. The good times keep getting better. Showboat, come on the good times. Showboat, the Mardi Gras Casino. There's no better place than Orlando to share great times with your family. And there's no better time to go than now. Just go to SeaWorldVacations.com today to book family vacation packages. This special offer must be booked by June 30th. So take a vacation in a place known for bringing families closer. Orlando, bring your family together. The Philadelphia Inquirer. Judge John W. Heron has the skills, experience for Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Endorsed as supremely qualified. Judge Heron, a tough former prosecutor, an Army veteran, 16 years experience as a judge. Judge Heron, the Pennsylvania Bar awards their highest rating. He'll serve with distinction. One candidate stands out. Judge John Heron, Democrat for Supreme Court. Behind him is a 400 square foot deluxe bachelor with a partial view. In front of him is a junior executive semi-private with no view. But right now, life is perfect on the open road in complete control of an Acura RSX. One of car and driver's 10 best. Who are you? I'm God. What is? How many fingers am I holding up? Seven. Yeah! <laughs> what if God granted you his power? If that was God, then I'm Clint Eastwood. Be careful what you wish for. The 
Funk on May 23rd. Sam. I got the power. Sam. Mm. Jim Carrey is having fun. Bruce Almighty. Ready to be 13. Welcome back, everyone. The New Jersey Devils took a three games to one victory into Ottawa tonight for game five, looking to expel.